Mark the wood for the roll on the wood. Here's my stud hawk. Stud hawk sponsor all of these videos, so forgive the advertising. And we'll cut the blocks aside. Anyway, so now we've got a block exactly the width of the roll. Just roll your block along the sandpaper like so, and then lift your sandpaper. Take that crease on the edge of a sharp piece of plywood, down, look how beautifully it tears. Now there's your block that we cut out of the wood. Put the sandpaper up the sides, ready for sanding. Okay, we use the block in a number of ways. You use the flat face, you use the edges, but you'll also use both edges at once, and I'll show you what I mean. So over to the woodwork. Well, it's new woodwork, and before we paint it, we need to give it a sand. We need to give it a pencil round, like a worn pencil. And what I want, to, want you to do is count how many times you pass, or how many passes, as decorators say, you give it with the sandpaper. So, one, two, three, have a feel. Feels quite nice, let's give that one three. One, two, three. So that we're getting the same finish on both pieces of timber. That little edge there. Touch the corner, very gentle. Across these two faces, that's where the flat comes in hand. So that they're perfectly flush for paint. So sometimes what you get is you get a bit of a burr. Look how that block fits in there. Vertically down there, you'll see that that is going in there. So I can take two faces at once, which is going to come in handy, especially when we're sanding between coats. Nice little pencil round, checking it. It out. Don't forget these edges of your frame. Three, the edge of the architrave. Then you'll be ready when your knotting's dry for your primer. And put your primer on before you start doing the filler so that the wood is sealed inside every little screw hole and nail hole. You might get the odd run and dribble, um, but brush those out. And we're not trying to put too much primer on. We'll show you when we put the primer coat on. So, see you then. So now that our knotting is dried on our knots, we're ready to start with the primer. But first, what we're going to do is to lay the door flat. So we're going to take it off and we're going to lay it flat. And I'm going to show you how we're going to paint the door after we take it off. This is always the first and last screw that you take out when you're hanging the door. That one. So I'm just going to take the bottom one off, like so. And holding the door with your left hand, what you'll find is when you start to take this one out, you're hanging on one screw now, is that when your hinge is partly out, your screw's partly out, take the hinge out like that and sit your door on the far bottom corner. That's also true when you rehang the door, what you want to do is put it on a diagonal so that you get the hinge up to get this screw in, drop its hinge into place on that screw, screw it up tight at one screw, then put your hinge in place and do your other screws up. And we're going to do our primer like that on the bench with the hinges off. I'm going to paint the edges, then when that's dry I'm going to turn it over and do the other side. This way ensures that you don't get any runs at all. Because all the liquidity the paint can do is spread itself flat, beautifully flat on the door. And that is how we get beautifully flat woodwork. And we do it like this with a roller, a four inch roller. And this one's called a mohair roller. It's different to emulsion rollers and it's different to the sponge one, which is your gloss roller. 
So we'll put those aside. The one we're going to use for oil-based paints is the mohair roller. And we're going to roll at this and then we're going to brush out, laying off with one stroke as we go, like so. Let's open our paint. Don't try and force it like that. Use your paint a little bit, going around the rim like so. Stops your lid rim getting torn. So I'm giving it a shake. And now I'm going to give it a stir because in the bottom you get all that pigment that you want mixed into your paint. A lot of people, a lot of painters, professional decorators, they decant their paint into their paint kettle. Uh, but I've got brush cleaner in that, so I'm going to use it straight out of the roller tray. The four inch roller tray and the four inch roller. Brush size, well, I'm going to go for an inch. You might think that's a bit small, but when an inch fans out, you're covering a couple of inches. The important thing to tell you about painting and how a paintbrush works. We don't dip our paintbrush into the paint like so and wipe it off. That's a DIY as well, well a bad DIY as way of doing it. Because the brush hasn't loaded itself with paint inside. And what you'll hear all painters do is they'll put their paintbrush into the tin and I'll have to do it on the tray to tell you, but what they'll do is they will they will slap the bristles on the side of the paint tin if you ever watch a professional painter. And there's a reason for that, and that's to suck the paint into the bristles so it's loaded without runs on the outside of the brush and ready to paint. An important thing about painting and how you use a brush, you cut in on edge, flatten out with the flat. So let's paint some woodwork. And these are oil-based paints. This is the primer, as we said, and we'll start to load where the roller is going to pick up its paint here. And we'll use this to start to brush in. Let's go and do some painting. Start at one end, work your way around. Don't start here, go here and come back here. Let's do it methodically. I always do the woodwork first. So that it doesn't get all splashed up with emulsion. And then we tape across the top of the woodwork, up the side of the architraves, and put the small four inch roller straight down the tape and that way we get a beautiful roller finish and not part brush finish on our emulsion and part roller finish which really looks naff. You can always see it around door frames where painters have painted but the roller's only gone up to there so you've got two different finishes, a brush finish and a roller finish. We don't want that in. Paint into your architraves. The hardest bit to get the brush in first. Make sure that's done all the way up into your corners. You can stipple into there. Make sure the paint's gone into every little looking cranny and groove in the hand. The pressure putting the paint on is quite forceful to work it right into every little crack. But the laying off technique is very gentle. So that in fact it's the weight of the brush being the laying off. And we're going to do a fine sand off of this coat. Then start to apply the filler first to every screw hole in the woodwork, every little punched nail hole we're going to have to go around. So when you finish painting, you don't want to say that's it and stop. What you have to do is go back around every hole where you've been after say 15-20 minutes and look for the runs. And just give them, make sure you brush out any runs. We are going to sand this, but we don't want to be sanding through any paint runs, so it's only the primer coat, the first coat, but just, just checking that we've brushed out nicely or it's not too thin in places. We're not trying to fill little cracks like that down the edge. Now let's look at the door. So imagine trying to paint around these hinges and around the knuckle, the back of the knuckle in there. It's impossible. The professional way is to take all of the door furniture off of the door. We're painting the door, not the door furniture. We sand at the top of the door and it's got all this white dust in there. You'll see in one second when I hoover it. See the difference? Sucking the dust out of the sanded. 
So I don't want to be trying to paint over dust. So let's put the door on a couple of tins so that we can paint all the way around the edges. And we start to rough load our roller. First of all, we're going to roll up an even coat of primer. Painting horizontally, I'm not going to get any runs. So, a dust free environment and these four inch mohair rollers. I'm forcing the paint around with quite a strong action with the roller, making sure the whole door is kept wet and coated up quite quickly and not drying so that I'm pulling up dried paint and partial wet paint. So there's our door, roll it up. Now if you wanted a roller finish, you could use the weight of the roller and just a touch of the finger pressure and slowly one pass so that you get the smooth, very fine roller finish. It's just the number of coats, not trying to put too much paint on at once. And then, if you are brushing out, the weight of the brush, one pass, one pass, one pass, and that will be for the brush finish. But you've got to be careful that you don't leave any marks in your brushwork. Very light pressure. And that's what's known as laying off to get a beautiful flat finish. We can use our roller on the edges as well, like so. And then you can brush out again. Also the pile of the roller helps get into that rough timber. We're going to sand further, coat up further, and perhaps give a little bit of two-pack filler to. Not a powder filler, but a two-pack filler. Basically, make sure you haven't got a, a run there and a run underneath. Repeat it around all four sides, and that's your first coat with your primer. When it's dry tomorrow, turn it over, give this side and the edges again another coat, because these edges are going to need quite a bit of paint by the looks of it, and um, but sanding in between. That's it for now. Tomorrow we'll tell you about fillers and powdered filler versus two pack. So here we are, starting to rub down our primer coat, which is happened on top of our dusting coat. Sand all those edges. As you'll see, the block and the paper are the tool. And then when you've done all the flat surfaces, and here I do two surfaces at once, with the edge of the paper wrapped around my block, down our door stop. So if you feel any bits of brick, you need a bit more of a rub down in here, there are two faces. We'll treat that with the block, the same treatment. Two or three rubs up and down, I should do, like we did before. Now we need to get rid of our block, curve our paper, to go in here. Our fingers are now the tool, our fingers and our thumbs rubbing these faces into our hollows. We need to curve our paper a bit inside the moulds. Rub them up. They're going to come up beautiful if you do this level of rubbing down between every coat. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a bit of a hoover off and we're going to do the two-pack filler. That's a hardener mixed with a paste and then put in with the filler knife on every nail hole all over. So we'll show you that in a second. Good to hoover all your screw holes out. See how much cleaner they come off the sanding? This is two pack filler, you'll smell it, it's epoxy. Let's mix that oil in. So we'll take a bit of the epoxy. Don't want too much. Onto our Then we'll take a bit of the hardener. Take some hardener. Imagine that'll do. Let's mix the two together. On 
now. The more hardener you put, the quicker it will set. The less working time you're going to have. But you need hardener, you can't use the paste on its own. So, there you go. Into our screw holes. Everywhere we can find them. Good action, put it in one way, scrape it off the other. Put too much on them. As you can see, so. You might have to do two coats of this, but what you'll be able to do is every little nail hole. We've been all the way around, filled our holes with a quality two pack filler. That's set fully hard. We'll come back and, and sand it and then touch it again for a fine filler. For any bit areas that filler may have shrunk. Or this. Get it off your knife before it fully sets. It's a lot easier. Just as it's hardening. Clean up like that. Rather than trying to get it all off as a rock hard set resin essentially what it is. So, quick wipe off, if you're ready for the next coat. Wipe it back, wipe it off, otherwise that is the start of what becomes a long run through time. It's a ridge of paint, which is why, as you can see, there you go, back to a nice thin coat. If you want to be building up thin coats rather than a thick coat, um, because that's how you gain the strength and you gain the evenness and run free finish. Our knotting, our primer, wood, wood primer, our undercoat, our filler, our rubbing down, our next undercoat, our next rubbing down, our next final filler, final undercoat and then top coat. So this is the second coat of filler that we've gone over our any tiny gaps, any little shrinkage on the first coat of filler. What I want to explain to you about these fillers is the filler itself is harder than the wood. So here's your wood surface, here's your hole and here's your filler that you put in on top. Now we put it in flush with the surface because the common mistake that a lot of you make is this area here above the wood and I'll just get the sand paper block and if you were to sand across there, the surface of the wood and the surface of the filler, because the filler's harder, what you'll end up with is a sanded hump that looks something like that. And these sanded humps across your screw holes will um, show as humps in a certain light. This, is, this emphasizes the importance of rubbing across that surface with a block so that your block reaches the wood and on, on both sides, and so that you don't end up with a hump during sanding. So remember that's a bag of sand. So last coat of filler. I'm going to watch so that I don't sand it all out. So that was it for the second coat of filler. Tiny rub. I have to take the block off. Put the, let the fingers be the tool. So just a touch of a rub. The last two. And that edge. Those two there. That surface with the block. 
back to fingers, into the contours of the skirting, and around for the energy model. Okay. Again, start at one end of the room, work your way around, and slowly but surely, coat by coat, these little hairline edges get filled with paint. But don't try to fill them all with one coat. You're a lot better finish building up your coats, which is the point of the number of coats that we have to go through to get a quality finish. Watch, looking as well as feeling what they're doing is all important. Look at it in the light. See if you've got any runs, any drips, any imperfections in the woodwork. And then we've done it systematically. And systematically, you'll find that you haven't missed. You start painting here, go over there, come back to here, you'll be missing bits. So keep a system about your painting and going around the room in an orderly fashion. Otherwise, you won't know where you painted and where you haven't. Into my grooves. Both ways out of the corner. Onto my flat with the flat of the brush. Brushing out nice and smooth. And it's all about your approach to the work the number of coats, not trying to put too much paint on at one go, and you're brushing off or laying off strokes. The laying off, look, just with the weight of the brush, and then you're going to beautifully smooth the laid off paint finish. Um, and as you see, we're not bothered about the walls at the minute. We're going to get our woodwork done first, and then we're going to attack the walls later and it saves you all that painful, laborious, slow cutting in. And when we've taped off around the edges, we'll be able to put our roller right up to the side of our tape, peel back our tape, and have a perfectly cut edge down there. If it isn't perfectly cut, all we'll do is touch the emulsion in with a brush. The door's on it, back, back. We had a couple more tiny imperfections. So we've done them with a two pack filler. Again with a block, you can use a round milling action to get these filler areas down, or you can go straight across. We've even put filler in this edge all around. So we don't pick all that paint dust off on our rollers. And we're ready for the last undercoat for this. Hopefully the last, it might need a third, but generally if you do it with a primer and two coats of undercoat, you should be all right and ready for your top coat. Again, mohair roller, short pile, gives a nice finish. the edges first, then hit the flats. Thin, thin coat over, over the top of the colour. So all the strength in your paintwork is in your oil-based primer and your oil-based undercoat. So if you have to do three undercoats, three undercoats it is get a beautiful finish. And don't skim. Is it as smooth as a baby's bottom? Well it should be if you've got the right grade of sandpaper and you do the right laying off. Either laying off like so lightly with a roller, just the weight of the roller laying off. Particularly useful tip for emulsion on walls. Plus it gives you the same finish. That's if you're roller finishing. If you're not, as we're not, then we'd like to brush out and 
One stroke all the way and off. Lay on, lay off. Lay on, lay off. Lay on, lay off. Because what you'll notice is if you go like this, lift the brush and go again, you'll, you'll see in your paint where you put your brush. So it's one stroke all the way. And to speed it up, let's have a look how it goes. There you go. So we've got a beautiful flat finish all over our door. And going at this speed will help you because on a larger door than this door, it'll be a bit bigger and already the coat at the top of the door will be starting to dry or skin. And you want to hit it all with the same finish all at once. Make sure we've covered all areas. Just so that we don't get a sort of um, bleed edge against those lips, important. Otherwise you can build a, an edge of paint, a ridge of paint at the edge, edges of your door or finished paint work. So I always like to give them a touch like so. So to save money on white spirits, between coats, what a lot of professionals do, plastic bag, inside the plastic bag, fully airtight and sealed, with a bit of paint still on the roller so that it doesn't dry out. Then you won't have to wash the roller out or repeat, um, use new rollers all the time. So that's good enough, bit of paint on it, till tomorrow. start attending to these plasterboard joints in the screw holes. This is plaster and scrim tape. As you can see, it's just a, a self-adhesive scrim and that is going to stick onto the plasterboard like so. I've already cut two lengths, so here we go. Down to the bottom like so. Self-adhesive. And the other one like so. Cover our joints so that we don't get cracking, hopefully. Now what we'll do is this filler, best filler on the market, top decorators use it, two prep. It's fed, just drop of water in your bucket and then we'll start to mix a bit in. To a nice creamy paste. Let's get my stick. Nice creamy paste. We're ready to do some jointing. That's a bit wet. You can see there's a bit of a shine on it. When there's a shine on it, just add a bit more powder. That might be a tiny bit too much. Yes, it is. So I'm going to need a drop of water in that. Actually, or are we? No, we're not. It's coming. Coming nice and creamy. There we go. Now, get our filler knives. And working with your two filler knives, filler knives like so. So now, I'm going to take some like that. We're going to go into the woodwork and we're going to have to hold the wall because it's a demonstration wall. And paste it into your joint like so. Across the screw holes. All these screw holes, like so. Over the tape pieces, you may need to do two coats. But there you go. Wipe in one way, off the other. Press it one way, off the other. Next tape. A bit more jointing. You can use jointing paste or jointing compound, as it's called. Or you can use a good filler, like this two prep, or you can use a tetrion, lots of makes on the market, a powder filler. So but don't leave too much to sand off. You're better off doing it in a couple of coats. So again, all of our screw holes, see how quickly wipe in one direction off the other. So that if this was your under Eve's storage area, which is what it could have been, we said, 
um, or it could be a full size partition wall. When you want to do your edges, get a piece like that and push in onto the edge, forcing it into that edge and then you can clean up the finishing stroke. Right, so. um, as I was saying, it could be an under the stairs WC in this wall, it could be under the eaves storage or it could be an ensuite, bathroom, dressing room or whatever. But the principles are the same. Too much on the knife now, we want those nice little ridges like so to be able to put into our edges. So, we can take all the excess on both walls, like so, and you get a beautifully finished corner. And it's important to force, to force the filler into the edges so that it's gone into full depth. So, quite forceful. Just pushing that further in. Okay, thank you. So here we are, the, the filler and taping and jointing with the fiberglass mesh is dry and it's time to sand it. So again with the fine grip paper, it doesn't need too much sanding. I like this milling action. If you haven't put too much on, you don't have to take too much off. You don't want to be sanding through the paper of your plaster drawer, but this is taping, taping and jointing. So now we're onto the walls and the emulsion. And we've chosen this grey colour. The traditional way is to go round and cut in your edges before you start to do the roller work. And I'm going to need my glasses here. So, we want to be cutting into that edge and running the cut with a brush. But, if you haven't got a steady hand, and mine's not that steady, and I remember flattening out, yeah, then put your masking tape. This is a low tack masking tape. And so I've masked around the edges. And this way, let's see if we can paint in nicely, quickly, rather than all that painstaking cutting in. So, you can see how painstaking and laborious cutting in is, and the quality of finish that you're getting by comparison to a taped edge. That's quite difficult. And then you get all these smears from your brush strokes. So, what a lot of decorators do, do now is we use the low tack tape, put it around the edges. If you use ordinary masking tape, it's going to over stick to your paint and it's going to actually pull your paint off. So you want this and then you can just flirt your brush down straight into the side and it's doing the cutting in for you. So you can put that in, corners is particularly hard. So there we go, beautiful clean line. Now we'll just take our roll up and before you take the tape off, what you'll notice is the roller's got that side, it's got the frame side. Rub your frame side next to your tape. Get your roll and finish in right across the paint strokes so that you don't have a difference between a roll and finish, which is a slight stippled finish, and a paintbrush finish. And don't forget with your rollers, I like a four inch roller because you can lay off nicely, it's not such a big heavy roller. A lot of decorators go straight in with a nine inch roller, I tend not to bother. I tend to go with this four inch roller because it leaves a finer finish to your paint. Whereas a big piled roller leaves a big pile finish, stippled, stippled all over where the roller falls. So, just remember, rollering off strokes. And down the edge where it comes a little bit shy, you might be able to see through the paint here if you look at the camera, you'll have to be giving it a second coat. But this is our first coat. Just there, a tiny little bit of light white coming through the paint. And you'll have to give it a second coat. But the beauty of this tape 
is, as you'll see, quick coat. And shy catch is just doing a touch, going over it, I'm trying to get that coat, but I'll show you what happens in a second. One last bit here. So, that's a coat of paint, your paint's still wet. But we can take our tapes off before the paint bleeds under the edge of the tape. So, like so, it's a lot less painful than cutting in. Obviously, that's a quick demonstration, and we'll probably have to go around and touch little bits, do over the white, do over the grey. When you've got two contrasting colours, you'll need a really sharp, clean line. As you can see, we've still got one or two tiny bits of bleed, but we can go over with our undercoat or our top coat and just cut those little uh, edges in for anyone that wants to be that perfectionist. Uh, I certainly do, and I'll certainly be going around that and cutting those. So we'll show you the last shot when the door's put back together. We've rehung the door, all these edges are cut in, and we'll show you that in the last shot. Thank you. The amazing new Studhawk Saw Guide set. There are two Studhawks in the pack. The Studhawk 90 makes cutting square simple. And those difficult miters, the Studhawk 45 makes them a piece of cake. The Studhawk helps keep your fingers safe and saves time squaring a line. Get your Studhawk Saw Guide set today.